In this part of the introductory movie, we're going to be showing some of the extra features of the exoswitch constraint. Specifically, let's just cover the various shelf items here, go through the shelf to kind of show some of the different things that you can do with the system. As you've seen in the previous movie, we can create uh, systems through this shelf button over here and this interface to determine the translation driver, rotation driver, and what nodes are being driven. This uh, button over here is adding selected nodes, so you can append what nodes are being driven into the system. And then we have removing the nodes from the system. And then this one over here is removing the nodes but preserving any animation. So let's go ahead and actually add a node and remove it. So let's build a system here with this cube as our driver, and then we'll just use this guy here as our driven. So we have a constraint system here with cube one is the only driven node. And then we will go ahead and let's, we want to add cube two into the system. So we're going to select cube two and then the exo switch constraint. Let's go ahead and add that node to the system. So now when we look at the constraint, the node being driven, we have cube one and cube two. And let's go ahead and learn how to remove it, which is basically grabbing the same cube, the constraint and removing it from the system. So now we are back to just cube one. So that kind of shows that we're able to um, dynamically add and remove nodes into and out of a system. And we can also um, disable nodes so that they're not influenced by the uh, driver's transformation influence. So disabling the nodes. So let's take cube one and let's disable him. So you pick the nodes you want to disable and then the constraint, and let's disable it. And now when I move cube three, uh, cube the other cube is not influenced at all. And let's go ahead and make them influenceable again, so let's enable it. Now when I move cube three, it's enabled again. Uh, these kind of turquoise buttons here are what we call auto driver select. Um, so by turning it on, when you play back, um, it will select the driver node, the current driver for that frame. So anytime the driver is switched, you will see a switch in selection. And that's an easy way for the uh, user to visually see the transitions between drivers as animation is played back. Uh, this um, uh, button right here is to assign a new translation and rotation driver um, to be what is currently selected. So if I want cube one to become the driver of the system. I will select the cube one and then the constraint and I will now uh, determine it as the driver. So now if I look at the constraint, cube one is the translation and rotation driver. So uh, let's go to these darker blue buttons which is auto switch and auto switch is a mode where um, anything that is, as your selection changes, that's the node that becomes the current driver. So right now cube one is the driver now we select cube three and that now becomes the driver. So that's what auto switch does. And then these purple buttons here are basically for querying aspects of the constraint itself. So if I want to know what are the current drivers, the translation and rotation driver of the system, I'm going to click this button. It gives me um, our cube three and cube three. And if I want to know who the translation driver is specifically, who the rotation driver is, give me any nodes that are being driven. So we should get cube one back. These are to list all of the members of the constraint. So we will get cube three and cube one back. And then if there's any animated nodes, any disabled nodes. Um, as we mentioned before, this is, we have attached the native Maya command to the exoswitch constraint system. Um, to get the flag command syntax, you can click on this help button here. It kind of prints out all of the different command syntax for you to use. Um, you can also gather that information from our website so that you can uh, you don't need to rely on the shelf buttons to create configure and query aspects of the system and then here we have um, our website links so that's some of the ways that you can interface with the system thanks